last couple of minutes of it anyway. <laughs> How goes? Great. So, Good. So congratulations on the success of the show. Thank you. You know, we've lo- I looked up your IMDb page. This is like the fifth thing that you've done. It's huge. Yeah. So congratulations. Thank you very much. How's that been for you? Is it surreal at this point? Oh, it's only been a couple of years that you've started off with that. Yeah, well, I you know I've been I've been acting as far as TV stuff goes. This is this has been really it. Um, uh, so my world has been theater up until now, and it's been like I love and I've enjoyed a lot of success there. And, but it is it's uh, it's pretty crazy to come into something uh, that has just skyrocketed. And I think we all had a sense of it being a really cool project when we came on for the pilot, and even from reading the first script, but. Um, I don't know if I ever could have imagined it being like this and seeing myself here. How did you get to that script in the first place? I loved the character. I mean, it was like, I loved how, uh, how funny they had written him and how I, I, I like, you know, I've done a lot of good guys <laughs> and I like that there is an edge to it. Uh, and, you know, we didn't get to see that as much in the first half of the season, but, you know, going forward, and especially going forward from now, uh, you get to see more of that creep in. It's, um, it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I knew that they were going to at least be able to write something that was complicated, and I like to dive into that sort of stuff. So let's think now that Tom has gone out, he's got a little more serious. Yeah. Is that going to screw things up with him and Laurel? Or Absolutely. That... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, this, um... You know, a, there's the essential problem of her being obsessed with, or her having a, you know, working relationship with the Arrow, and a fascination with that, and now I know that that's one and the same with the man who is still in love with her, <laughs> uh, so obviously that's going to raise a red flag in, in, in Tommy's brain, um, and Going forward from right now, there's going to be a lot of, you know, that conflict comes up a lot, uh, and it really carries us through to the end of the end of the first season. Is just how everybody deals with all this knowledge. Is it going to be Tommy down more following the famous footsteps and going on Malcolm's route? You certainly see them uh, becoming closer uh, in the next couple episodes. Uh, uh, and, I mean, it's it. it you can see how it drove a wedge in between us in the first place, and uh, and it, the direction that it catapults him is into his, you know, now, uh, like, I mean, there's a bit of a relationship now between him and his father, uh, thankfully, because now he has somebody to turn to, and he is turning right into him. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like working with John Broman speaking? Ah, oh, he's great. <laughs> we we're just, just goofballs. I've heard. I, I mean, I've seen him at other cons, and I know he's kind of a goofball. Does that same energy? Does he bring that? Same oh yeah, to the and the two of us like just have a great time playing off each other when we're on set. I mean, it's you know, so much of the show is very serious. <laughs> so to like you know, the camera cuts, and we get to have a good time, and we get to make people laugh, and play and just kind of just goof off. We come from the same kind of background, so it's like, just, yeah. Now, besides Steve taking off his shirt, because, uh, <laughs> is there a dog here? Now, you're from the comic book aspect. Hey, now. Hey, now. No, it's not really a secret. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Besides Steve's thing, what do you find is the crossover appeal between the young adult crowd, the you know shirtless muscle-bound girl swooning crowd, and the comic and the comic crowd all coming together for this series? I think one of I mean it's a, it's a, it's a testament to the writing, I think, um, and it's a testament to the people that they've gotten to come on the series and uh, say those words. Um, that it's not just appealing to a certain demographic. I mean, it's, it's, um, they, because the writers are such comic book fans themselves, they put everything in there for that crowd, um, they're creating a real, uh, you know, they're, they're trusting us as actors to really convey some pretty difficult stuff, um, uh, and, some pretty complicated and deal with some pretty complicated relationships 
Uh, and then the stunt team, I can't say enough about our stunt team. I mean, it's just the work that they are able to do in the amount of time that they are given to do it is unreal. I like anytime I know that there's going to be a stunt happening on set anywhere close to when I'm shooting, I always go early or stay late to watch it. Um, like that last sequence, uh, I, I showed up to set two hours early so that I could watch uh, them jump across all the buildings. <laughs> that was fucking awesome. <laughs> Come on. It was, it was pouring down rain, so nasty out, and they just jumped across a fucking building. <laughs> I was like, what are you, okay? <laughs> yeah, it was like, and... It, it, it's just un, like James Bamford and JJ Marker and all those guys just do such Simon and Atlin and uh, they really do an amazing job with things um, it's cool so I think like you know it, back to the original question it's like it, it, they've done a really cool job of making it a very appealing show for a really broad base of people um, you know you've got really good looking people <laughs> uh, who take off their shirts and they've got giant boulder sized arms and it's awesome but you know then there's fun stuff for people who just talk <laughs> uh, maybe <laughs> uh, there's some I mean I'm usually just involved like I'm there for the stunts you're not going to see me doing a salmon ladder anytime soon. <laughs> You're not going to see me jumping across any buildings anytime soon. Tommy getting a boat for Christmas next year or something. God, that'd be nice. <laughs> yeah. Give from Dad. Be another vigilante. Yeah. Hey, son, I just wanted to tell you something. Uh, who knows? You thought your friend was bad. I may be five times worse. Yeah. He's kind of a badass. <laughs> Um, Secretly practicing the salmon ladder at home. <laughs> yes. I, I have one set up in my apartment. <laughs> I won't show you the bruises. Tommy's in a really interesting place because he knows some secrets as well as he knows some others. What do you think he ultimately wants? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think he wants some sort of stability um, and that was what he was finally achieving for is this like and now all of that's been exploded in his face um, has he ever really had it though? no I mean, no <laughs> like, I, I mean, <laughs> but he had you know he had an idea that maybe someday <laughs> wouldn't be interesting TV if he did <laughs> but, but I think, like, it's, uh, you know, I think that's, there's never going to be, you know, if he finds out this other secret, what's that going to, where's that going to put him? He's going to be between a rock and a hard place. A giant rock and a really, really diamond hard place. It's, um, you know, shit's hitting the fan all around him. And it's, it's what he does with it is, uh, and what he does with all the information is really what's going to be interesting, I think, for the audience. Thank you guys, it's a pleasure.